G'day YouTube, I am the Daff and welcome back to Fate Stay Night. This is episode 4. Sheesh, getting there, but many, many, many more episodes and hours to go if I could even complete this game. So, we ended episode 3 with a choice. I'll go and help out the student council or I'll go to work. I'm going to choose number 1. I may end up just choosing number 1 each time, but I just have a feeling that something's gonna happen at the school slash i've watched the anime and i don't remember what arc the anime follows but there is the movie that follows the other arc because i believe there's two different arcs we can go on so i believe this will just get the story going and apparently you can only go through a, the same part before doing the same two arc the two arcs anyway so probably doesn't matter I'll go and help out at the student council. It's something I s I've started. I should finish the job I began this morning. I'll change my plans. We're finishing the job from this morning, right? Let's finish the repairs before the exam start. Thank you. Let's go and look at the patient area. The patient in the art cl club there. I don't know where I got area from. All right. And clear the people out of the room, will you? I can't concentrate with people watching me. Of course, I won't let them get in your way. Issei quickly walks to the hallway and I follow him out of the classroom in a hurry. Long loading scene. Whoa. I don't know what happened there. That other keyboard had something resting on it, so... Ah, shit. Load. Let's just go back. <laughs> uh, help out. Bam, bam, bam. So, yeah, the thing was sitting on um skip text button. That's annoying. It went through really quick. <laughs> oh, we end up here anyway. Oh well. The sun has already set when we leave the school building. The school gates have already closed, and I was hoping something would happen at the school. It's 7 o'clock and way past curfew, but thanks to Issa, we're not in trouble. Because the student council runs the school pretty much in Japan, right? You helped me a lot today. I'll certainly make up for it. So, tell me if you need anything. Yeah, I'll let you know. If something comes up, I don't think anything will, though. Wait, I don't understand why you have comments like that all the time. I didn't help him to get something in return, so there's nothing I want from Issa. Man, he's such a down-to-earth guy, I guess. Jeez, I guess it's a problem to be too good a person. It's helpful to have you around, but I can't stand it when other people use you to their liking. Helping others is a good thing, but you should be more picky with who you help. You just help anyone who comes to ask you. Hmm? Am I that indis indiscriminate? Yes. And that's just going to let heartless idiots use you as they wish. You're a busy man, so it should be okay for you to decline from time to time. Pause. I can't really tell. But it seems like it says worried about me. I've been called helpful since I was in middle school. And I, as I don't turn down requests for help and I don't ask for anything in return. I guess Issa thinks that that's dangerous. But I'm doing it because I want to. And it's not a problem as I decline things that I think are beyond me. So you decline things you think you can't do but you accept everything else. That's... Okay. There's nothing for you to worry about, is there? I know myself better than anyone. Besides, helping people is a good thing. It's not something a son of the owner of a temple should be trying to stop. But I think you're going too far that might eventually overwhelm you. I'll take your warning. See you tomorrow, then. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Is there leaves looking discontented? It says house. Raidu Temple is up in the mountains, so naturally, our routes go home in different directions. I walk through the main, moon, moonlit town. Walking 
off the road, I notice that there aren't many people around. Any people, not many. Many. The time is around 7.30. There should be people around at this time, but there's not a sign of ever anyone. Oh yeah, there was some crime here in Mi Miyama City a few days ago. A burglar murdered someone, I think. I see why there's no one around and why the school curfew became 6 o'clock. Gas leaks and murder, huh? It's been getting dangerous lately. No wonder there are fewer people walking around at night. It's getting too dangerous to let Sakura go home on her own. Sakura's house is in the residential district on the other side of town. Starting tonight, I should work, walk her home. Huh? huh? For a moment, I can't believe my eyes. There's someone on the road which I thought was empty. The person is standing above me as if, as if looking down at me. Oh, hello. I forget your name. Without realizing it, I hold my breath. The silver-haired girl smiles and descends the hill without sound. As she passes, you'll die if you don't summon it soon, on me, Chan. Did I say that in such a creepy way? You'll die if you don't summon it soon, on me, Chan. On me, Chan. Not Ilya, that's her name. She says something strange. Yes. That could be considered strange if you got someone went up to you and said that you're going to die soon. I go up the hill and reach my house. As the lights are on, Sakura and Fujine must be home already. I smell dinner the moment I enter the living room. At the table area, Sakura and Fujine are in the middle of dinner. It seems the main dish tonight is chicken and cream, and Fujine who loves white sauce, is in a good mood. I like white sauce as well. Welcome home, senpai. We're sorry for starting without you. Sorry I'm late. I wish I could have come home earlier. No, you made it. Could you wait a bit? I'll get your dinner ready right away. Yeah, alright. I'll go and wash my hands, so make sure Fujinan doesn't eat my food. Yes, I will. I return to my room. It's a fairly empty room compared to the shed, but since I don't have any hobbies, I think it's quite decorated. Isn't... don't you have a hobby of fixing things? Like, I would count that as a hobby. Most of them are random things Fujine has left here though. I wash my hands, change and return to the living room to find my dinner ready. Itadakimasu. I hope it is to your liking. I hope it is to your liking. Sakura is terribly modest. Her cooking skills have vastly improved in the past year. She has been completely beaten at Western style foods, and I could barely beat her at Japanese food. Neither of us have touched Jap Chinese. I'm pleased my pupil is getting better, but it's kind of depressing when a teacher is defeated by the student. Mm, it's as good as I expected. Chicken becomes harder the longer you cook it, so it's juicier and tastier if you roast it before cooking it even though it's tedious. If you roast it before cooking it, I would put roasting as cooking in as, like, as a kind of cooking. Okay, that's done perfectly here. It's a master skill, forever beyond the clumsy Fujine. How is it, Senpai? Um, I think I did quite well today. Perfect. The sauce is great too. I guess you have me completely beat when it comes to Western food. Yeah. Michi food is much better since Sakura Chan started cooking. With that, Fujine, who had been preoccupied with her food, lifts up her head. Oi, Shiro! A student mustn't come home this late. Fuck. It seems she's in a bad mood now that she's seen my face, even though she was happy because of dinner. Jeez, I bet you were helping someone again. That's good, but at least come home early at times like this. I even told you it was dangerous and lonely. I said it for your sake, you know. Um, can't you tell me that at home instead of in homeroom? You wouldn't listen if I told you here. It's more effective if, it's if I tell you at school. I think I've changed her type of speech compared to the previous episode. Oh well. Sensei, I think that's all. 
abusing your authority. You shouldn't mix work and private life. No, it's nothing except for Shiro. Unless I go that far. He's always on the losing side because he's the one helping everyone. You should at least come straight home and relax sometimes, Barker. Hey, what do you mean by Barker? It's not on the losing side if I help someone and then help by it. I can't help but say Barker instead of idiot. Even though it's in English, it's just because it's a Japanese game. <laughs> yeah. It's just force a habit, I guess. Man, I wonder if you got that from Kiritsugu-san. Kiritsugu. Kiritsugu-san. I'm gonna have to- I'm gonna get it right someday. I'm worried because you're like that. I don't exactly know how she's worried as she's energetically munching down her dinner. She looks proud, so like, oh, herself. <laughs> no, seriously. Sakura looks unhappy. Um, Ujimira Sensei, what you said, has Senpai been like this since he was small? Yup, he's always been like that. He's a type that goes and helps people in trouble. But he's not meddlesome, he's just a bit precurious. Wait, no, that's how it said. Ujimira laughs dangerously. Ujimira, I'll get mad if you say too much. You too, Sakura. Don't ask such boring questions. I glare at them. Fujine clicks her tongue and backs down, but Fujimura, Sensei, please continue. Sakura is taking the lesson seriously. Then I shall. See, Shiro is a person who can't ignore someone in trouble. It's like helping the weak and defeating the strong. In the essay he wrote as a child, he said, "My dream is to become a superhero." Shock. <laughs> She is so shocked there, that's amazing. She's talking about things from so long ago. But it's all true, so I don't interrupt. Anyways, becoming a superhero is a goal I must not stray from, even now. <laughs> superhero. Wow, Senpai was a real kid. That face that Sakura has right now is creepy. Like, I, <laughs> it's really creepy. Like, look at it. So... Senpai was a real kid. Yeah. He was some kid. He would go and help girls being picked on by much older kids. And he'd do the chores around the house because Kiritsuki some wouldn't. Man, he was so cute and innocent back then. So why did he grow up so crooked? Probably because of you. Kids think a lot when they see bad adults. Learn to make your own dinner before you say anything like that. What? Fujine crumbles. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. I thought she might drop her head and repent, but... <sighs> On there, Chan is sad. Sakura Chan, can I have another bowl? Fujine asks for a third bowl. Well, she eats a lot. What's this whole bowl? Relaxing after dinner. It's almost 9 o'clock. Well, what shall I do? There's some time before my evening training. I take Sakura home. I'll play with Fujine. I'll rest. Guess taking her home would be the safe thing to do, right? We will take Sakura home. I'm just taking option one, option one, option one. I haven't thanked Sakura for dinner yet, so I'll go and talk to her. Yeah, it's getting late, so I should walk her home too. I should be putting save points for these questions. Sakura is in the living room, getting ready to go home, having finished a cleaning. Huh? Won't you taking a bath, Senpai? No, I'll take it later. I'll take you home first. Huh? Take me home? Yeah, it's getting dangerous outside lately, so I'm gonna walk you home. Your house is far away, so let me at least do this much, since you're coming so far. Gods. Sakura falls into an awkward silence. Did I say something bad? Uh, I'm sorry, I appreciate your concern, but you should stay here. I'm used to going home, so I should be fine by myself. Well, that may be true, but it's getting dangerous these days, so I'll walk you home for a bit. But, um, if Nissan sees you, you'll be in trouble too. Hmm? 
That's right. Sakura's brother, Shinji, doesn't approve of Sakura coming to my place. He can't object too strongly because she says she's going to Fujimia's house, but it could be a problem if I take her home. It's a problem, but so what? Be a man, Shinji. I don't care what Shinji says. It's a much bigger problem if Sakura has to walk home alone at dangerous times like these. I don't care what trouble I get into. It's dangerous these days, so I'm walking you home. Um, I feel bad letting you do that. It's fine. You're always helping me out, so at least let me walk you home. Or do you want to go home on your own? Huh? No, it's not that bad, but... Then, I'll be, it'll be fine. I'm confident in my skills. I sh should be able to fight off most assailant assailants, so you should make use of me at times like these. I'll protect you, whatever happens. I nudge Sakura towards the hallway with a glance. Shut that door. <laughs> Stop making noises. <laughs> Trying to make a recording here. Oi. Oi. Shut up. Senpai? Is it really okay? You might get into a fight with Nissan again. I don't care. It's only right for guys to fight, and it's best when we talk honestly like that. He doesn't like to hide things, so it's best if he just comes out with any complaints he has. Sakura looks surprised for some reason. What? Did I say something strange? No, you didn't. I'm just glad you're such a good friend with Nissan. Hmm? No, I don't think that's right. I'm probably the only one who feels better from it. And it might be the opposite for Shinji. Perhaps. But you know, Nissan always talks to you no matter many no matter many times you two fight. Uh, they're missing a how there. He probably finds it hard to deal with you, but he likes you more than other people, so he's always concerned about you. He's not honest, so he likes people he doesn't like. Uh, I can't really reply to that. Yes, I envy you. So I thought I'd trouble you a bit. Sakura smiles. Ah, uh, seeing that smile, I hold my breath without realizing it. Would you call that a big smile? I think she's, it's the first time I've seen a smile like that. Anyway, I'm taking you home. I don't care if Shinji sees me. I walked his sister home, so he shouldn't be complaining. You're right, it might be better to do it that way rather than to hide it. Then, could you, Senpai? Of course. I'll act like you're Senpai for once. I smack my chest. Sakura smiles warmly at my jester. Oh, trust me. We go down the hill and reach the intersection. There's no one around, and the familiar residential district feels desolate. Long, really long pause. It's not even 10 o'clock yet, and the town is asleep. The silence is strange, even though there have been nasty incidents, should not really steal this much light. Uh. <coughs> oh god, I apologise. Senpai, uh, my house is this way. Uh, uh, sorry, I was just thinking. Your house is the very top one on the side right. Is everyone's house on top of something? <laughs> no, the top one is Torsica Senpai's house. Torsica. Friend Torsica. I see, yeah. People who watch the anime may understand things. My house is up there too, but not at the top. Oh, was that it? Wait, by Torsica you mean? Yes, Torsica Ring of the second year. Do you not like her, Senpai? She must have read my reaction, as a comment is accurate. Uh, I was making that kind of face. I don't dislike it. I've never talked to her, so I don't know much about her. But she's famous, right? She stands out wherever she goes. So I know her just like everyone else. Dots. What about you, Sakura? Do you have the same Western style mansion? Do you guys have a neighbory relationship? No. We're occasionally. We're certainly neighbours, but her house is on top of the hill. But how did you know her house was Western style, Senpai? Sakura asked quietly. Oh, it's just something I heard. Something about Tosaka's place being a haunted house and all that. A haunted house has to be a western style house, right? That's a big assumption, I guess. 
I never really thought of it that way. That's true. It seems tall, sick of sun, and the house itself like to be alone. When I was a child, I was told that a scary sorcerer lived up on the hill. A scary sorcerer, huh? I heard rumours like that too. Though, saying that, all western style houses seem to have sorcerers living in them. So, did you believe the story, Sakura? I did, because I was small. That's why I always thought I shouldn't go up to the top of the hill. Sakura answers my joking question seriously. We go up the hill. It's a residential district, rather opposite to mine, but the habits are the same. They are fewer and fewer buildings, and more trees as you ascend the hill. It's only natural, as most of the town's facilities are at the bottom of the hill. How many times are you going to say hill in this episode? In all that, one of the few buildings near the top of the hill, again, hill, is Sakura's house. So, Sakura stops suddenly. Hmm, did you forget something? Uh, um, no, it's not that, but Senpai, is there someone standing near my house? She looks around uneasily. Hmm? I look around too, but there's no one here except us. There's no one. Did you see something? Uh, I don't know. If you didn't see anyone, then it's fine. I've been noticing a strange person around my house recently, so I just wondered if you'll be here again today. What? Isn't that a bit dangerous? What kind of guy was he? Yeah, sure. Wait. Uh, he was a blonde, good-looking person. He looked like a model, so I'm sure you'd be surprised who if you saw him. Sakura says so with a blush, as if recalling him. Sakura? I don't know if it's something I should be worried about. Oh, so it's not like he's suspicious. I don't know, it's just that no one has ever has moved here recently, so I thought it was strange. Hmm, well it's a bit strange alright. If you see him around again, tell me or Shinji, we'll get him and make him tell us what he's up to. Yes, I'll be counting on you, but please don't do anything wrong. I don't want you to get into a fight. Sakura says so while smiling straight at me. Uh, it's alright, I'll ask questions first, so you shouldn't worry about it. I look away from Sakura's smile as I answer. Dots. Jeez. Sakura's gestures captivate me often these days. It would have been nothing a while ago, so I feel like I'm acting weird. Maybe it's because Sakura has grown, or maybe because I have finally noticed it. Well, I do not think Sakura has become... Well, I do think Sakura has become really beautiful. That on its own is great, but I don't think it's cool for a senpai to have to be careful where he's looking. I say just look. Good night then, senpai. I'm glad you're walking home. Baka, don't thank me. You're the one making me dinner, so I should be the one thanking you. Everyone just has massive houses. What is this? Sakura just smiles with satisfaction, particularly in Japan where the country's so small. Jeez, is this all it takes? I'll make a habit of it from tomorrow. Please do. It's fine if you only do it once in a while when you feel like it, but please do walk home with me, Nisan. son. We'll get mad, but I like being with you. <laughs> I lost completely, like, mind blank in the middle of that sentence. Senpai, see you tomorrow. Thank you for today. Sakura calls back enthusiastically and disappears into her house. Well, I should head home too. I left Fujin there at the house, and to be honest, that's what worries me. Huh? Did I just hear something? Sound like a cricket. Or... I don't know what it would be in Japan. I can hear it again. The sound of a creaking swing. It takes me a while to realise it's the sound of some bug. I wonder what kind of bug it is. It's well out of season, certainly. I imagine a longhorn beetle in the dark under the cold winter sky. Then I notice. Huh? There are three rooms with lights on. One just, that just lit up is Sakura's room. Yeah, assuming it's her room. The light on the first floor is Shinji's room. So what's the light from the third floor? Only Shinji and Sakura should be living in that place. Maybe it's a guest, or Shinji's in that room. Anyway, 
I've been here many times, but this is the first time I've seen that light on in that room. Dots. Well, it's a big house. It's not strange for a light to be on somewhere in such a house. It's not strange, but... What's this? I feel uneasy. I feel something like a presence or a bad feeling. In the cold air, the unseasonal sound echoes. If there's such a thing as a hunch, the big, the bug hidden in the bushes feels very ominous. End of scene. So, I'm going to wrap this episode up here. And, looks like he's got home. And, I'll see you next time for the new day. So, as always, I'll see you next time.